amazing news. Canada has announced it is going pretty much all in on EVs. New laws are coming into place in 2025, regulating the sale of gasoline-powered cars. This is going to change Canada and the United States as well in a huge way. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's great to have you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. My name is Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Newcastle in Australia. Not Newcastle in the UK where it's hard to understand what people are saying. No, it's not that hard. Actually, it is. When I went to Newcastle in the UK, by the way, my, my, my dad is from the UK. So, you know, I do like people. That, I do like the UK. It's a, it's a really cool place. I'm talking about England here, by the way. When I went there, when I went to Newcastle, I was riding my bike around the world and we just caught the ferry from the Netherlands and we arrived in Newcastle. We rode off the ferry. We rode our bikes to McDonald's. We were starving, hungry. We hadn't eaten or eaten for ages. And I went into the Newcastle McDonald's. I ordered some food. I tried to, and I said, and I said to the lady, I'm sorry, do you speak English? And I didn't mean this. It was totally unintentional. I'd been so used to saying that in Europe that often people would say, yeah, I speak English and they'd talk to you in English. And I, because she had such a heavy accent, I thought she was, I just, I just thought she was speaking a different language. And she looked at me and, and I said, oh, I realized that, yeah, she did speak. She was speaking English or a, a certain form of English anyhow. And I was, I said, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. That was embarrassing. Canada are going all in on EVs. This is huge news. A lot of the mainstream media are saying this is too hard. They shouldn't be doing this. It's going to be, it's not, it's not actually achievable for Canada to do what they say they're going to do. They can't achieve it. But I disagree. I believe that this is going to change the United States in many ways and Canada. Why do I say the United States? Well, there's been more than a hundred billion dollars pledged to invest in battery factories and new factories making EVs in the US. Where do you think a lot of those cars are going to go now as a result of these new rules? This is going to be massive, massive for car manufacturing in both the US and in Canada. Canada's EV mandate may not be easy to achieve. Well, I mean, Carbuzz says it's too hard to achieve. I don't agree. One fifth of all new passenger vehicles will need to run on electricity in three years. One fifth by 2025. Is that doable? Absolutely. Canada has proposed new regulations that require one fifth of all new passenger vehicles, including cars, trucks, and SUVs, all of them, semis, everything, to run on electricity by 2025. Per Automotive News Canada, the country's environmental minister, Stephen Dual Butte has drafted the updated guidelines, which will see automakers and importers face penalties under the Canadian Environmental Protection Act if they fail to comply. Now, I fully agree with this stuff. I think when you've seen the results of people potentially getting cancer from pathogens in the air, especially from diesel and gasoline fumes, which is proven now, I have no problems with this whatsoever. I think this should happen immediately. So 2025 is is better than, I mean, it's better than not at all. It's not immediate, but it's a good result. The mandate will increase to 60% of all new vehicle sales by 2030. 60% by 2030. And come 2035, every new passion vehicle sold in Canada must be electric. That's it. They've joined Europe. But 60% in 2030, 20% in 2025. It's going to happen potentially even quicker than Canada realizes, I think. These are huge goals. And I've got to say, even though I haven't agreed with everything that's been happening in Canada over the last few years, in terms of how they've handled COVID, I think it's been mishandled. I think it's hurt a lot of people in bad ways that we could have avoided. This, though, in my opinion, is really good news for the country. Now, Carbuzz says this is a big problem and it actually maybe can't be achieved because... Not enough Canadians are buying electric vehicles, even affordable ones like the Chevrolet Bolt. Canadians, if you're watching this, do you agree with that? Is that true? Are you guys not buying EVs? Is there a reason for that? There might be. Supply 
and prices. Two things that are going to change drastically. Of course, magazine, I mean, publications like this, mainstream media publications, they can't understand. They can't understand the concept that when you invest more than $100 billion into technology, into producing cars en masse, what does that do? It brings the prices down, supply becomes more plentiful. What's happening now with Tesla, right? Like I've been saying now for many, many months, prices come down once supply increases. Supply is increased. As you can see now, prices are coming down. However, Carbaz says the data is not promising. In the first six months of this year alone, Canada's electric vehicle sales, which include both pure battery electric and plug-in hybrids, comprise only 7% of all new vehicle registrations. In 2021, it was only 5%. On the one hand, the numbers are increasing, but hitting that 20% goal in only two years' time, yes, we're already in 2023, we're about to hit it, so it is true that it's only two years away, does not seem possible according to much of the media. But the Canadian government refuses to back down. They think it's possible, and in fact, they are saying it has to happen. The draft regulations set to be published on December the 30th call for the government to track new vehicle sales by issuing credits. For example, all electric vehicles and trucks will have higher credits than plug-in hybrids. Now, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen as a result of this. I think it's obvious what's gonna happen, but at the end here, I'm gonna give you all the information, what's happening, and then we'll basically tell you the obvious. That is hundreds of millions of dollars are gonna go from some companies to other companies, right? Yeah, this is what's going to happen. Now, Carbaz says that's all fine and good, but Canadian authorities are already aware that plugins will continue to be in high demand in rural and northern parts of the country where there are far fewer charging stations. The Canadian government is currently pushing a broader set of new environmental regulations to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in all sectors with the ultimate goal of dropping them in 2030 by 40% to 45% below what they were in 2005. Incredibly, Passenger vehicles account for half of the country's road transportation emissions and nearly one-tenth of total emissions. That means, right, that trucks amount for the other 50%. You can see just how important it is for Canada to do what the US have just done, which is impose new regulations on emissions on the trucking sector, which is going to be a massive benefit for Tesla and other companies who make trucks. It'll be interesting to see whether the new regulations will actually be enforceable this time around, says Carbaz. They don't think that they can actually enforce these regulations and that it'll just, the Canada government will just say it and it won't actually happen. That is ridiculous. Of course they'll enforce it. Europe's enforcing it right now. China is enforcing it right now. It will be enforced regardless of your feelings on this. It doesn't matter. The point is, it is going to happen. Now, it is true that in the past, Canada had EV sales targets, but it failed to pressure automakers to increase EV production. Authorities hope this new policy will be different. Well, there's a big difference, guys, car bars between policies and recommendations. Encouraging car manufacturers to make more EVs means nothing unless you actually put policies and regulations in place. It's two totally different things. What's gonna happen is this. Of course, many automakers such as Toyota in particular Toyota exactly, will not be able to supply Canadians with 20% of their cars as EVs, right? There's no, there's zero chance that Toyota's going to be able to manufacture that many EVs because they're simply not focusing on it, are they? They're not, not yet. They still haven't decided what their plans are for the next decade for EVs. They're saying they're going to release their plans in January of this year, and who knows what that's going to be. But the reality is the chances of Toyota being able to produce 20% of their cars as fully electric cars in Canada in 2025 is extremely unlikely. Now, while they could start shipping EVs that they say they'll eventually be manufacturing in the US to Canada, can they ship that many there? Can they? I don't know. I mean, it might be possible. But realistically, what's more likely to happen is companies like Tesla and other car manufacturers like, um, uh, I don't know, maybe Rivian, uh, there's not a lot of big manufacturers are going to be making a whole lot of EVs, to be honest, even in 2025, maybe General Motors, maybe Ford. They will simply receive money from Toyota. So Toyota will pay those companies, uh, other companies like Honda as well, will pay those companies to, for their credits, for their zero emissions credits. The system will work very similarly to the ones in Europe and in China. Canada will simply copy that system 
And what all that will mean was money transferring from companies who don't make EVs, Honda, Toyota, Subaru, Nissan, Mazda, ring any bells here? Japanese manufacturers. So we're moving away from those manufacturers. They're just going to give money to Tesla and other car companies who are making enough EVs that they can buy the credits from them. That's simply what's going to happen. Right now, Tesla is making a lot of money this way. In fact, they made approximately, from my calculations, about $1.5 billion in 2022. That's the approximate number Tesla made simply by selling carbon credits, right? This is uh, a way that Tesla just make a lot of cash. I mean, it's not really true that Tesla makes eight times as much money per car sold as Toyota. People believe that's true, but the truth is a significant percentage of those revenues of that profit comes from carbon credits. Those are not going to stop anytime soon. People keep saying they are. The media has been saying for years now, those carbon credits would be would be finished. Tesla wouldn't be making any money out of that. But actually, the truth is, Tesla's making more money from carbon credits than ever. Here's another way that that's going to keep on happening. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you see this playing out in Canada? If you're in Canada, do you plan on buying an EV? Do you have an EV? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.